Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. Chapter 3 Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he hath taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord hath not done it? Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets. The lion hath roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God hath spoken. Who can but prophesy? Publish in the palaces at Ashdod, and in the palaces in the land of Egypt, and say, Assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Samaria, and behold the great tumult in the midst thereof, and the oppressed in the midst thereof. For they know not to do right, saith the Lord, who stored up violence and robbery in their palaces. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, An adversary there shall be even round about the land, and he shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. Thus saith the Lord, As the shepherd taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs, or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out that dwell in Samaria in the corner of a bed and in Damascus in a couch. Hear ye, and testify in the house of Jacob, saith the Lord God, the God of hosts, that in the day that I shall visit the transgressions of Israel upon him, I will also visit the altars of Bethel, and the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. And I will smite the winter house with the summer house, and the houses of ivory shall perish, and the great houses shall have an end, saith the Lord. Chapter 21 the word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, when King Zedekiah sent unto him Pasher the son of Melchiah, and Zephaniah the son of Maasiah the priest, saying, Inquire, I pray thee, of the Lord for us. For Nebuchadrezzar king of Babylon maketh war against us, if so be that the Lord will deal with us according to all his wondrous works, that he may go up from us. Then said Jeremiah unto them, Thus shall ye say to Zedekiah, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, wherewith ye fight against the king of Babylon, and against the Chaldeans, which besiege you without the walls, and I will assemble them into the midst of this city. And I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and with a strong arm, even in anger and in fury and in great wrath. And I will smite the inhabitants of this city, both man and beast. They shall die of a great pestilence. And afterwards, saith the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah king of Judah and his servants and the people and such as are left in this city from the pestilence, from the sword and from the famine, into the hand of Nebuchadrezzar king of Babylon, and into the hand of their enemies, and into the hand of those that seek their life. And he shall smite them with the edge of the sword. He shall not spare them, neither have pity nor have mercy. And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death, he that abideth in this city shall die by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he that goeth out, and falleth to the Chaldeans that besiege you, he shall live, and his life shall be unto him for a prey. For I have set my face against this city for evil, and not for good, saith the Lord. It shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. And touching the house of the king of Judah, say, Hear ye the word of the Lord. O house of David, thus saith the Lord, Execute judgment in the morning, 
and deliver him that is spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor, lest my fury go out like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Behold, I am against thee, O inhabitant of the valley and rock of the plain, saith the Lord, which say, Who shall come down against us, or who shall enter into our habitations? But I will punish you according to the fruit of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will kindle a fire in the forest thereof, and it shall devour all things round about it. Good morning or good evening, wherever you are. We are hurrying to the end of another week. Tomorrow is the penultimate day of the week. Of course, the Sabbath, Saturday, ends the week. And we will certainly be praising God on Sabbath day for taking us safely through the week. But today we want to focus again on his word. We are reading now Amos chapter 3 and Jeremiah chapter 21. Amos chapter 3 and Jeremiah chapter 21. However, we are focusing on a text in Amos chapter 1 as we introduce the book proper. Amos chapter 1 verse 11 states, Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. Again, Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. Today's message is entitled, Grace to Let Go grace to let go let us pray father thank you so much for being our present help in trouble and for taking us through each day we ask that you will stand beside us now as we listen to your word and apply these truths to our hearts for christ's sake amen someone said that true forgiveness is hard to extend because it demands that people let go of something they value, not a piece of jewelry, but pride, perhaps a sense of justice or desire for revenge. Again, someone said that true forgiveness is hard to extend because it demands that people let go of something they value, not a piece of jewelry, but pride perhaps a sense of justice or a desire for revenge, end of quote. Therefore, we need to pray that God will give us grace to let go of that which prevents us from having a forgiving spirit. Now, the prophet Amos rebuked the unforgiving spirit of Edom. Now, who was Amos? From the sketch of his life, which Amos gives in chapter 7, Verses 14 and 15, we learn that Amos was a herdsman and a gatherer of the lightly esteemed sycamore figs. The impression is given that though he was poor, he was independent, which may account for his being able to leave his flock for a while. The chief purpose of the book of Amos was to call the attention of God's people to their sins. The chief purpose of Amos was to call the attention of God's people to their sins and, if possible, to bring them to repentance. As the spirit of Paul was stirred at Athens when he saw how fully the city was given to idolatry, so Amos must have been stirred by the luxury and the sins he so vividly describes in detail. Amos rebuked the sins that sprang from material prosperity 
the extravagance, the revelries, the debauchery of the rich who are able to maintain their lifestyle by oppressing the poor and by perverting judgment through bribery and extortion. Sounds like modern problems also. Amos gives more attention to the details and circumstances of iniquity than does the prophet Hosea. Amos is everywhere graphic, revealing transgression in the events of the daily life of the people. No evil practice, no evil practice seems to have escaped his notice. He counted it his duty to warn Israel, Judah, and the surrounding nations of the divine judgments that were sure to come upon them if they persisted in iniquity. However, Amos closes his book with a glorious picture of the triumph of righteousness over iniquity. As he details the transgressions of the people, Amos the prophet says in Amos chapter 1 verse 11, Thus saith the Lord, For three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not revoke its punishment, because he pursued his brother with the sword, while he stifled his compassion, his anger also tore continually, and he maintained his fury forever. You see, friend of mine, in chapter 1, Amos denounces the three nations related by blood to Israel, those nations being Edom, Ammon, and Moab. Now, Edom, who descended from Esau, was the most closely related to Israel and yet the most hostile. It is Edom's unbrotherly attitude towards the descendants of Jacob from the time of Esau till the time of Amos, rather than any specific acts, that the prophet condemns. The prophet Amos condemns the unbrotherly attitude of Edom towards the descendants of Jacob from the time of Esau till the time of Amos the prophet. And these passages would detail that. Numbers chapter 20 verse 14 to 21, Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 2 to 8, 2 Kings chapter 8 verse 20 to 22, and many others. You see, friend of mine, it is bad to hate an enemy. It is worse to hate a friend and still worse to hate a brother. We say that again. It is bad to hate an enemy. It is worse to hate a friend and still worse to hate a brother. Amos stated of the descendants of Esau that their anger did tear perpetually and he kept his wrath forever. O oh, friend of mine, so many nations and tribal groups are warring and fighting continually because of old hurts and hatred. One generation passes on the supposed grievances to the next generation and the anger and bad feelings between people is like a fire burning forever. Just because one politician says nation for nation, race for race, you don't have to be angry at your fellow brother and sister of a different race today when those politicians are long gone and dead and so Amos condemned the Edomites because their hatred was perpetual and their anger burned forever there are some ethnic groups who will not live peacefully with each other even as the Jews hated the Samaritans they hate each other of different villages and ethnic composition. There are families that are separated and distant because of ill will between relatives and family members. I was at a funeral where the relatives of the dead almost wanted to fight in the burial ground because they had issues and they were forced to be in each other's presence because of the dead relative and they couldn't get along even at a funeral. Old oh, friend of mine, only Jesus can give us a loving heart. The soldiers heard Jesus and yet he prayed from the cross in Luke 23 verse 34, Father forgive them 
for they know not what they do. However, we must be willing to be made willing to love, forgive, and put away old hatred, bad feelings, malice, and ill will towards others. Now the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18 verse 21, the Bible says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. You see, friend of mine, directly or indirectly, much of chapter 18 of Matthew is devoted to instruction on the Christian's attitude towards offending brethren, particularly where the offense is personal. Peter tacitly accepts the idea of dealing patiently with his brother, but he would like to know how long he must do so before he is free to take a more stern attitude and to seek redress. You see, Peter here seeks to anticipate the degree of patience Jesus might be expected to recommend, seven being the number generally thought of as representing perfection. So in Peter's mind, perfect love and perfect patience is seven times. But to forgive a person seven times and no more would be a mechanical sort of forgiveness. Forgiveness on the part either of God or of man is much more than a judicial act. It is a restoration of peace where there had been conflict. Romans 5.1 but forgiveness is even more than that. Forgiveness, true forgiveness, includes the effort to restore the erring brother or sister to him or herself. But forgiveness is even more than that. It includes the effort to restore the erring person. Like how Jesus restored Peter among the disciples when he asked him, Lovest thou me more than these? He reinstated Peter. You want everybody to know that, hey, Peter denied me, yes, but he still loved me. So, so don't put Peter aside. I love Peter still. The truth taught by Jesus' response when Jesus told Peter, not seven times, but 70 times seven, the truth taught by Jesus' response is that forgiveness is not a matter of mathematics or legal regulations, but an attitude. He who harbors within himself the idea that at some future time he will not forgive is far from extending true forgiveness, even though he may go through the form of forgiving. You see, friend of mine, if the spirit of forgiveness actuates the heart, a person will be ready to forgive. True forgiveness is not limited by numbers. Furthermore, it is not the act that counts, but the spirit or the attitude that prompts the act. Nothing, friend of mine, can justify an unforgiving spirit. And the remainder of Matthew chapter 18 consists of a parable given to illustrate the true spirit of forgiveness. Friend of mine, if the people of Edom had forgiven, they would not have retained their anger forever. And in their act of forgiving, they would have fitly represented the God they served. For the Bible says of God, in Micah chapter 7 verse 18, the Bible says, Who is like unto thee? Who is a God like unto thee, that pardoneth iniquity, and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth, in mercy. Unlike Edom, who kept his anger forever, the Bible says God does not retain his anger or his displeasure forever. If we come to him sincerely and ask his forgiveness, the Bible says in 1 John 1 9 that God is willing to forgive. The Bible says in 1 John 1 9 that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. May God therefore help us 
to ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to develop it in us a loving heart like that of Jesus so that we would be willing to forgive those who hurt us. May God help us to ask him for strength daily so that we will be more loving and forgiving towards those who hurt us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for your stubborn love, your love that never lets go. Thank you for forgiving us time and time again. And Father, we pray that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you will help us. Help us to be forgiving towards co-workers who hurt us, towards family members who hurt us, towards church members who hurt us, towards even strangers sometimes. Help us, dear Lord, to know when to be firm. Help us, dear Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, give us the wisdom, dear Lord, to know how to process forgiveness so that in the act of forgiving, we will truly represent you. Let us pray, Father. Thank you so much for your grace that is greater than our failures. Thank you, dear Lord, for reminding us that we should not, like Edom, store our anger forever and to be unkind for generations. But help us, dear Lord, through the power of Jesus Christ, for we cannot do it in our own strength. Help us to love the way you loved us. You love us and help us to be like Jesus. Father, we're praying for this person who is asking that you will be with their loved ones. And so we're praying for Wenaldo to be successful in all his subjects at his exams. Someone is asking, Lord, that we pray for Wenaldo that, that he would receive a scholarship and sponsor for his career. And Father, someone is praying that no matter where he goes, that you will continue to hold him and that he would continue walking in your footsteps. And Father, we pray that each one who hears this broadcast will also lift up this person's son, this parent's son, Wenaldo, that he will be successful as he writes his exams and that he will receive a scholarship and sponsor for his career and that he would hold on to Jesus, come with me. And Father, we place in your hand all the other prayer requests. Please answer each one in the right way and at the right time. And grant us, dear Lord, a wonderful day and a refreshing night. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.